Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. About a year ago, um, after Alvin and I moved into this apartment and we got settled, I did an updated bookshelf tour because it was the first time, am I boring you Rex? Excuse you. <laughs> It was the first time all of our books had kind of been squished together and I was able to show all the books, but due to the limited bookshelf space, I'll throw a picture up here of what our bookshelves looked like before. There was just a limited amount of space for books. So we really couldn't organize them by like genre or in any oh, big stretch. Look at that booty. We couldn't really organize them in any kind of meaningful way, but we just recently finally got to redo the bedroom and so you can see over here we've got a new entertainment center and that's actually another bookshelf right there and then we really were able to create the like room divider bookshelf of our dreams and this is what we came up with it's one two three big calyx units from ikea i'll throw the picture up right here so we got three of the two by four calyxes and then stacked on top for this very top shelf it's a one by four calyx unit and they're not screwed together or anything, but they are very thick and sturdy, so they kind of sit nicely together like this. Um, but we do have um, some command strips, just to kind of, like on a surface level, just to have them kind of together for aesthetic reasons. Um, but technically, you're not allowed to have full room dividers according to our lease, so as long as you can take these apart and move them, we're good to go. So I figured we could go through and do an updated tour of all of my books. <laughs> Rex is probably gonna be in and out squeaking toys um because this is his realm he loves the living room so you can i there he is as you can see this is his playroom he loves the living room he likes the space he likes the rugs and he i don't know if you can tell there's like hair on all the drawers down there um because that's that's his level that's where he likes to chill so he'll be coming in and out but i thought this would be a fun way to just kind of do a chill updated bookshelf tour we'll go through all the books and we'll also go through all the little decorations that i've got around so if you missed the uh, previous bookshelf tours that I've done, I'll go ahead and throw one of them up in the cards and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I think it's gonna be best to kind of start from the top and work our way down, at least in the in the middle, buddy. Um, so over here to the left, we've got um, Alvin's Batarang kind of thing. In the middle here, I've got two like really big, one's a scrapbook and one's a photo album that we have all of our printed photos in. And then up here, we have a cute little stuffy. He is a um, trash panda, but he looks like a pumpkin, like the way that it's made. It's adorable. I don't know where we got it. It was somewhere Halloween themed and his name is Garbaggio. He's adorable. And then up in the top left, we have a beautiful masquerade mask that my best friend got for me when she was in Italy a few years ago. Moving down, we have some of our other spooky decor. These are actually like little tequila bottles, but they came as black and white skulls and I loved them, so we had to keep them. This is a really cool like skull, not skull, but like skeleton clock that Alvin got for me when we first started dating. Um, over here, I've got My Side of the Mountain, which is one of my favorite childhood books. Um, and I have that next to the um, Hannibal Lecter book series. So we have Hannibal Rising, Red Dragon, Sounds of the Lambs, and Hannibal. And then of course, next to it, we have one of my Funko Pops. We have the Hannibal Funko Pop. That one's based on the TV show Mads Mikkelsen 1. Um, we have another skull. We have some black trees in the back. Um, here, I've got miniature books. Um, we've got Edgar Allan Poe. And then there's another one up here, the Oresteia. Um, those are in Italian, and my best friend also got those for me when she was in Italy. And then down here is another small book that I had. This is a, um, like, vintage English-Japanese dictionary that I found at a used bookstore a few years ago. Over here is a bit of a sentimental section for Alvin. This is his old motorcycle helmet. Unfortunately, back when we, like, first met and started dating, he was in a really bad accident on his motorcycle. A distracted driver hit him without looking, of course. Um, he was very badly injured, his bike was totally wrecked, um, so he likes to keep the helmet just to kind of remember the good times because he loves his motorcycle. Eventually, I mean, I'm thinking maybe after we have a house, I'd love for him to have another one, but also I'm like terrified of like another bad accident happening again because he was pretty lucky to survive with what happened. Um, so we've got his helmet, and then here are actually the two um, collars from dogs that he's had in the past. Unfortunately, I never got to meet them, but we uh, eventually, I would love to get these put into shadow boxes with pictures of the dogs. Um, but for now, we just have them up here on our bookshelf. In the last cubby hole over here, I've got just this little porcelain guy. He's actually a ring holder, so if you put, like, an engagement ring on it, he holds it up. <laughs> so I had this in the bathroom for a while, but I kept knocking him over, so... I just put them over here. 
This is Alvin's, uh, like it's a music box globe thing, which is just really cute. I love it. So we have it up here. So I don't want to pull it out, but down here I have a wand that I got when I went to Harry Potter World a few years back. I can't wait to go again. I think it'd be fun for Alvin and I to go together. I actually did a vlog for this day. I forgot about it. If you missed that vlog all the way back then, I'll throw that up in the cards. Moving on one shelf down, we actually start getting into some books and some kind of uh, binders. Um, so here we have uh, Rex's binder. It has all of his uh, like health insurance, paperwork, pet insurance, anything related to Rex goes in that binder. Next over we have kind of the uh, like operating manual binder. Um, for most of our like big products like our air conditioner, our coffee maker, um, anything that's expensive, <laughs> I keep the manuals just in a separate binder. I used to keep them in the family binder but it just got way too thick <laughs> and it was just too much stuff. Um, so speaking of family binder, it has all of our important like family related paperwork, anything that we're going to be doing um, like as a family moving forward, it's going to be between here and the wedding binder. Um, this is a cute little baby, <laughs> baby milestone book from when I was a baby. Um, this is my high school yearbook. I didn't really have any other place for these two to go. They just kind of fit here. So they're there. Um, and then next we have our wedding binder. We haven't really started super planning because we're not planning to do anything wedding related until late next year. Um, but I picked up the binder from The Knot, just to kind of go through. They had like some worksheets that I thought would be really helpful to go through. And then I wanted something that was already a binder so that as we start going through and doing things, we can start just putting them into the binder and then it would, they would all be in one place. So we've got that. And then I picked up this book, which has been interesting because it also has some worksheets and stuff on it. This is Modern Etiquette Wedding Planner. Um, I would recommend getting this if you really don't know what you want to do for your wedding yet. If you already have an idea of what you're going to be doing, this isn't going to be super helpful. But what this does is it gives you a bunch of exercises to do with your fiance so you can kind of figure out, okay, what do you want to do together? How do you want to plan? What do you want your budget to be? So it's been like perfect for us. Um, and we've worked through a few of the exercises already, but a lot of it, you kind of have to be closer to the actual wedding day. Typically, it seems like for this book, you want to be one year out from your wedding. Um, and since we're not planning a big wedding, honestly, it's going to be small. It's just a little too early, but I really like it and I think it's going to be very helpful. Last on this shelf, I just realized how dusty that was. That is embarrassing. <laughs> but this is another photo album. Um, I'm trying to get all the photos into like that bigger photo album. So this is mostly empty, um, but I do need to go through this organize a bit more and maybe get one more of the big photo albums to put those in. Now we get into actual books and actual literature. Uh, so I was actually really happy that I could organize things by like genre or type for me. So these kind of shelves right here are all of my Japanese studying textbooks, Japanese literature, Japanese dictionaries. Because if you didn't know, I did study Japanese for like six years in school between high school and college. I'm a bit rusty now. I honestly, I need to like get Duolingo or something to just keep me practicing on a regular basis again. But I used to be proficient. I can still catch conversations and like I could do basic things, but I'm not as good or proficient as I was when I was studying all the time. <laughs> so I have this cultural Alice of Japan, which is actually a wonderful gift from the commander of the Air Force Base that my dad used to be on. When they found out that I was actually going to Japan, it was my senior year of high school, I went to Japan for like a, um, a small kind of sort of exchange trip with another school. Um, they actually gifted me this atlas and it's like from the 50s and it's just beautiful. Like it's really a coffee table book. It has a bunch of just like, let me pull open. It's really informational, but it's just like beautiful as well. So I can't wait till we have like more space and we could really put these out like on display because this is the kind of book that you'd really want to display. And they also included some of these like old handouts because they had stayed in Japan for a while when they were stationed there. And they had um, like this is from the Museum of Kyoto. So there were a few things where they just included them and it was just it was a really, really touching gift. So I love this atlas. Um, these are two of the Japanese books that I used in studying at, uh, these weren't until college. So this is the Tobira um, Guide to Advanced Japanese or Gateway to Advanced Japanese. And then this was the Kanji workbook. I suck at Kanji. <laughs> I'm just not good at Kanji. Um, but I studied, I did my best. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, we've got um, a couple of 
uh, literature books over here. We have Musui Story, Everyday Life in Traditional Japan. These were actually uh, purchased through my bookstore job. These I did not get while actually studying, but I just bought them because I was fascinated and I wanted to read them. These are books we actually read in class, like Bolchan. We've got Patriotism with that crazy motherfucker. <laughs> We've got Snow Country, Rashomon, Naomi. These are all books we actually read in class and um, we read parts of it in Japanese and translated it, but for the most part we read them in translation. Um, the Oxford Book of Japanese Short Stories, that's another one where I bought at the bookstore that I worked at because I really wanted to read more. This is a uh, very complicated, <laughs> not very complicated, but it's a kanji dictionary um, so we can look things up by the kanji. It's not like this where, well this is also a kanji dictionary, but this is a kanji dictionary in English. This is a kanji dictionary in Japanese. So it's a bit more complex. I had just gotten to the point where I could use this <laughs> pretty efficiently when I like stopped studying. So I could not use this right now. I'm a bit behind. I could go back to using this one though. All right, moving down. Um, these are two books we actually used in class, the Kagero Nikki and then the Genji and the Heike. Um, this one was actually a gift. This is actually the first Harry Potter book in Japanese, and it's like, this is a really hard book to find. It's like the first edition that was printed in Japanese, so it's pretty rare, and I didn't know that when I got it as a gift. But it's also a, another very uh, personal and sentimental gift that I was given. So that's this first Japanese shelf. And here's the second Japanese shelf. And I know not everything here belongs here. We're gonna talk about it. Um, so I've got quite a few Murakami books. We've got 1Q84. We've got Killing Kamitadori, which is actually, I think, my new favorite. I really liked this one. We have The Colorless Sukuru Tazaki. We have Kafka on the Shore. We've got After Dark. Nor I don't like Norwegian Wood. I really don't. It's like the big, like, popular book of his, but I don't know why. It's it's not the romance everyone thinks it is. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, we have Convenience Store Woman. And you know what? I just bought another book by the same author and I hated it. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. I'll throw the picture up here. But I hated that book. Don't get that one. <laughs> I don't like it. This one was actually really good though. Um, we've got Battle Royale, which was really hard to find like in print. I found this at a used bookstore years and years ago in like Virginia. It was really hard to find. I don't know why. But at the time it wasn't available on online to buy it all. Next we have Daughters of the Samurai. This is a fictionalized novel based on the real life of um, some Japanese women that were sent from Japan to America for um, school or studying and well it was part studying and part kind of them being basically a roadside attraction for Americans so very interesting and it's based on a true story so make sure you look up the actual story behind it as well. Um, and then I have got The Samurai's Garden, which was a novel by Gail Sukiyama, and I actually got to meet her at a, um, a book fair in DC a few years ago, and she signed my book, and I really like that. So, and I also love the book itself. It's very calm. It's, it reminds me a lot of My Side of the Mountain. It's kind of like the adult version of My Side of the Mountain to me, but anyway, so I like that. And then for the book that's meh, we have Memoirs of a Geisha. I really liked this when I first read it, but I was like a young teenager when I first read it. And I know that the geisha that was actually interviewed for this book hated it so much that she wrote her own book. So um, I'm actually going to buy that actual geisha's novel, not novel, her memoir, because she wrote about her own life. And then when I get it, I think I'm going to recycle this one or donate it because it's it's really honestly I like the story but it's just so icky that it's written by a white man and it's fictionalized it would be better if he just made it up but since it's literally based on someone's life and he he like took something that was hers and just oh it's just icky I don't like it <laughs> so I want to get rid of that all right so moving on from the kind of Japanese literature sh section I have this which are um mainly memoirs or biographies so I have Romantic Outlaws, which is about Mary Wollenscroft and Mary Shelley. I have Julie and Julia and Cleaving, which are both memoirs by Julie Powell. I have two copies of Wasted, um, a memoir by Mar Maria Hornbacher. One of my, like, the most effective, like, memoirs I've ever had or ever read in my life was that one. Um, I have The Death Class by Erica Hayasaki. She actually took... She was a journalist who took a really famous class at a university I used to work at, um, and she wrote a book about it. Fascinating stuff. Loved it. Next I have Chinese Cinderella and Falling Leaves, which um, Falling Leaves is the full, um, I think, memoir of um, Adeline Yan Ma, and then Chinese Cinderella was kind of like a small portion of that taken out. And this was actually kind of written for um, a younger 
group of kids to read like i read this in middle school and it just really affected me and i loved it and then i was able to read the full memoir 100 percent recommend if you can get your hands on either they're really really nice i love memoirs it's like i think one of my favorite genres of fiction not fiction <laughs> one of my favorite genres overall it just I, I love being able to kind of step into someone else's life or shoes for a little bit but yeah that's why i love it so much i have ruth bader ginsburg which this isn't so much a memoir because it's a collection of her like public her public her published writings thank you i've been talking too much today um so it's not really a memoir in her own words but it's it's her own words in so in such that they are her published works so we have that. I have two books by Caitlin Dougherty because she's awesome. I love her. Smoke is in your eyes and from here to eternity. Um, and then this one, I actually have not read this one yet. Um, this is called The Chicken, the Dead, Life and Death Behind Mortuary Doors. So I have not read it yet, but I'm very excited to get there. So next, let's do the cookbook section. Um, I've got this big chunky binder first. And in here I keep, well, mainly it is all the recipes we've really liked from HelloFresh. Um, I keep them nice and organized in here. I kind of don't want to pull the whole thing out because it'll make a little bit of a mess. Um, but I also get like magazines from my grandma whenever she finds cool recipes. And if there's something I really want to try, I'll clip it out, put it in a package, package, in a page protector. There it is. And I'll keep them in there. So that's kind of our big recipe binder. And then for actual cookbooks, um, this is an Instant Pot magazine. Nothing really too special. Next we have a bento cookbook. I also really like Japanese food, so I wanted to get, um, this is actually a recommendation from my manager. Uh, my manager, Vanessa, is half Japanese, and she got this book and she really liked it, so um, she recommended I pick that one up. Um, I also have, these two are like half memoir, half recipe cookbook, and I use them more so for the recipes, because there's some, it, the, the memoirs themselves are a bit meh, <laughs> um, but it's French Women Don't Get Fat, which is a bunch of um, French recipes written by a French woman, um, and then Japanese Women Don't Get Older Fat was a, a memoir written, written by a Japanese woman, and um, I kind of bookmarked in the Japanese one all of the recipes so I could go back to them, um, and then this one I still have to, I've read it all the way through, and I've got some interesting things I want to try, but I just kind of dog-eared the pages. I have to actually go through and like bookmark them. So I've got that. I've also got French Guy Cooking. This is a uh, a YouTuber named Alex. He's really cool and we really wanted to get his cookbook. That one, um, Alex, Alex. <laughs> Alvin was actually a fan of his and he introduced me to him and I really liked it. Um, next we have this, the sound of my people, the Easy Puerto Rican Cookbook um, because I am trying to learn more about Puerto Rican cooking. Um, and then I've got like the, this is like the intense actual like bible of puerto rican cooking um i have not yet been able to make anything <laughs> from here that's complicated eventually i would love to be able to make bateles but that's a long way off <laughs> so we've got that i've got this memoir too it's called voracious but it also it's kind of the same thing as these where it's like part memoir um but it's also recipes she's recreating from literature so i keep it in here and then this is actually a gift i got last christmas we love trader joe's so my grandmother got us the i heart Trady, trader joe's party cookbook <laughs> and it's it's all good fun so um eventually i do want to get more cookbooks i do love cooking and i want to learn more so this is going to get filled up we might have to scoot things over too because i think we're going to need more space or i might use the back as well because we'll go through later on in the video i'll also show what's on the back because these shelves are so thick um that you could put books on both sides so that's also really nice down here we have john constantine pop funko this is alvin's because he loves hellblazer and john constantine particularly so if you come back here he's got his collection going of the uh i think this is what the collector's edition of hellblazer and that's coming out volume by volume so far we got 26 of them so i think he's pre-ordering or i can't remember if this one's already done or if he was still pre-ordering some but he's got that collection and then this is where i'm gonna be out of my depth because over here is the rest of his comic book collection and then my one hamilton book for some reason <laughs> So he's got um, a lot of comics here. He's got like Batman over here. He's got like Marvel over here. It's about as much as I know about it. Um, he's got some big ones over here. And then we've got Hamilton. <laughs> Another coffee table book, but I love the Hamilton musical, of course. So we've got that. Um, and then we've got, I think this is a video game. Maybe. <laughs> I know Zelda's a game. There we go. Oh, and then this was a gift, a coffee table book from my best friend. She got me the art of Howl's Moving Castle, because I love Howl's Moving Castle. 
that's a beautiful book too. I can't wait till I have room to like display these books as well. So now that we've done here, let's go to the very end of the bottom shelf. He's just sitting on the couch watching me film. You having fun, buddy? No, he's not having fun because he keeps bringing me toys and squeaking. We'll, we'll play in a little bit, buddy. I gotta finish filming this first. Wow, this is so dusty. I should have dusted before I started filming. Man, that that is very embarrassing. So we went through cookbooks and comics and musical related things and now um, this is actually the beginning of just my literature <laughs> section. This isn't um, super organized, but it is like all like literature, some fiction, mostly fiction, some nonfiction as we get a little bit further down. But I wanted to at least be able to put kind of all of what I consider like my classic literature in one spot. So I have several copies of The Red and the Black, which is one of my favorite like novels of all time. Next, these are some nonfiction pieces. This is an old um, random house like office collector set called The World's Great Thinkers. Um, and it's just like a collection of philosophy writings and readings and it just looks really cool and I like I like finding vintage uh, book pieces whenever I can at used bookstore so I got those in a set together for a really great price. As for the literature that I love, I love the Norton Critical Editions of titles which are all of these right here. They just have the best footnotes, they're organized the best, and I like the resources they keep in the back. So like for Frankenstein, I think it is... <laughs> so like this first half of the book is actual Frankenstein, and then this whole second half they're all extra readings and resources you could go through. Um, and I just love that about the Norton Critical Editions. So for titles that I love, I will have multiple versions of that title um, together. So like Frankenstein, I love Frankenstein. I have three different versions of Frankenstein. Um, the Norton Critical Editions, I mainly got from, um, like this one I got from my boarding school because we read it back then. This one I think I got in college. This one I got in at the bookstore, I think. This is when I worked at the bookstore. And this one I found at a used bookstore, which is really cool. Um, for the red and the black, that one was from school, because I think this is the one I actually used in class when we read it. This one I bought, nope, this is the bookstore. So this one I used in class, this one I bought at the bookstore, then this one I found at a used bookstore. I love it. <laughs> so I have those. I love Dante, so I've got a copy of Dante's Inferno from the Norton Critical Edition line, and then I also got a copy of Hamlet, and this one was available also at the bookstore that I worked at. It's not my favorite Shakespeare play. What is my favorite Shakespeare play? There are a few. I think it's Macbeth. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not my favorite. I don't think, I think they have a Macbeth in the Norton Critical, so I have to pick that one up, but I don't have it yet. So, we've got that for the first section of the literature part. All right, next we have a continuation of our literature section. We have um, Voltaire, uh, Candide. We have The Stranger by Albert Camus. Voltaire, I read in a class. This I picked up from the bookstore I worked at. The Sun Also Rises, I read back in high school, and that's the copy that we had. I also read The Great Gatsby in high school. These are both from high school. Um, these were from college. I have Beckett Endgame, Sophocles, that is Antigone. We have three Theban plays, but actually there is a, what I've seen or heard, is a better translation of plays and a collection of essays called, is it three, not three Theban plays, it's like four plays on grief? That's in my cart to, per to pick up sometime soon. Um, this book is um, Euripides Hippolytus, Hippolytus, but I love going to used bookstores to find copies of these things because this book is so old. Like, there's actual writing in here from 1914. How insane is that? Um, 1914, used for production of play at 1914, something college, summer, met in outdoor theater, under direction of Professor Daniel. How cool is that? Okay, like, that is the coolest thing. Um, so this, it's a bit more fragile <laughs> than a lot of other things. See, this is came 1913. This was printed in 1913. So this, it's a bit fragile, but I love, the, I love like old books like that, especially when they're for like um, ancient Greek plays. I, I love ancient Greek plays. <sighs> Sorry for geeking out about that for a little bit, but that was just a really cool find at a used bookstore. 
Next, I've got uh, four plays from Ibsen that I used when I read in my tragedy class. Um, next, we have Fahrenheit 451, which is a very, another sentimental book for me. This is from high school. And this is a cute little necklace that I have that's made of the, the cover of the book, and they match. So I thought they belong together. Next, we have my high school copy of The Count of Monte Cristo. This is the abridged version, I believe. Yes, the abridged version. I do need to get like a better collector's version of it that's non-abridged. Um, I don't know if there's Norton Critical Edition of it. If there is, I will pick it up. Next we have Shakespeare. This is the version of Macbeth that I read in my tragedy class that I wrote like a 20 page paper on Lady Macbeth on. Um, but again, I need to pick up another better version of those because I love both of those pieces. And then, like I said, multiple copies. We've got another copy of Inferno, and this is actually the one I used in my um, tragedy class. It's a big, chunky boy. All right, next we have... I need to find a better place to put these because these are literally my favorite novels, but I love Donna Tartt, so I've got The Secret History and The Goldfinch. The Secret History, I've read so many times, this book is literally falling apart, so I need to get a new <laughs> version of it. Um, the Goldfinch, I got at a used bookstore for like nine dollars. I try to avoid buying hardcover like novels just because they take up so much space, but I love Donna Tartt and odds are I'm gonna try and find a hardcover of The Secret History to get. Um, below that, I've got the collector's box edition of Harry Potter from a few years ago. This was actually a gift from my best friends, m my best friend and her mother. Her mother used to work at Scholastic, so they were able to get me this box set. I am missing the first book because I, uh, I lent it to an old co-worker of mine, and then she moved back to Europe, <laughs> so I, I did not get it back. Uh, but it's okay. I just need to buy the first book again and put it in there. I think they still sell it individually. I just gotta find the ISBN for that. All right, next we have a couple of random novels. First we have Horror Store, which is <laughs> such a cool book. I love, like, unique concepts like this. So this takes place in, like, an Ikea that's not called an Ikea for copyright reasons. But the book looks like a catalog. And the whole story takes place inside of like a hella haunted Ikea. And it's a cool, creepy book. It's scary, but I love it. Like this is such a good book. If you're into creepy things or scary books, I would highly recommend you pick that up because it's a fun experience, I think. Then we have some uh, novels. We have Asymmetry, which is really good. The Devil Wears Prada, one of my favorite novels. I love that and I love the movie for two different reasons, um, but they're both very, very good. The Book Thief makes me sob like a child. <laughs> I sob like a baby every time I read it, but it's it's so good. It's so good. Moving on to the next cubby, we have a lot of Alvin's books. So a lot of these are textbooks from when he was at Rutgers. He majored in animal science. So he has companion animals, some statistics, introduction to animal science, psychology, um, animal, and then this is a book on <laughs> knife engineering. He is very passionate about knives just in general so he just got that on his own for future reading and then um he has the complete calvin and hobbes he loves calvin and hobbes so he's got the full collection there and it's it's a very nice that's another thing i would love to display prominently one day all right moving on we have some more novels and i remember i just said i try to not get hardcover and there's a lot of hardcovers here <laughs> <laughs> but some of the books are just so good. Like Project Hail Mary, um, that's the same author he wrote The Martian, and I like that book better than The Martian. The Martian's a really good book, so I loved that one. We've got The Current, Killing Monica, On the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, A Flicker in the Dark, um, City of Girls is so good. You should definitely, if you've not bought that, get it, read it, it's so good. This is a book from my childhood. This is uh, the Royal Diaries series. I think they like um, wrote fake diary entries um, based on like various historical figures. And I'm laughing because Rex is in the other room squeaking all of his toys and I have no idea if you can hear that. Um, next we have Ready Player One and Two, which eh. I liked Ready Player One when I first read it, but now, it's not great. It really, and the second one sucked. It really did. It was really bad. Um, so I, I might, those might get donated at some point. Um, but we've got The Collector by John Fowles, a really great, really creepy book. Uh, if you like crime, <laughs> that'd be a good one. Um, and then Cracks, very interesting, very disturbing book right there. And then let's scooch to the next section. Rex, if you could stop squeaking. 
Otherwise, I'm gonna close the door. Gonna close the door. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. Gotta stop squeaking, my buddy. All right, so the last a cubby of books on this side is again a continuation of just my novels. I've got Middlesex and The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenie, 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 <laughs> I just can't. Um, both very good. I liked Middlesex so much. It was very, very interesting. Um, a Little Life, uh, if you would like to sob uncontrollably for hours, it's very disturbing. Ch uh, trigger warning for like a lot of SA <laughs> in there. Um, and a lot of other disturbing things, but such a good book. He came out with a new one, and I just, I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for it yet. So I have not bought it yet. <laughs> um, Purity was a really good book. The Shadow of the Wind. I'm surprised it took me this long to read it, because that book was published, I think, back in the 50s. Or later. Um, but it's really good. So, definitely would recommend that one. Um, Elizabeth, another Elizabeth Gilbert. I should put this one next to City of Girls, because she wrote that one. But this one was also an another really interesting one. If We Were Villains, I loved this. This was kind of like, um, very similar to Donna Tartt. I liked that. I like the dark academia kind of vibes you get from it. I'm thinking of Ending Things, which was very cerebral. We'll put it that way. Interesting. Uh, we've of course got The Handmaid's Tale, um, A Gentleman in Moscow. I read this when we first went into COVID lockdown. It was a perfect time to read it. <laughs> it was, but in general, just a really, really good novel. Next we have Annihilation. I've heard um, it, this is like a trilogy, I think, but I've heard the other two books are not good, so I only bought and read the first book, but I loved it. It was mind-bending. Um, I loved this, and I loved the movie, too. Both really, really good in their own ways. Next, we have the raw shark texts, which, after all this time, I still don't fully understand it. I've read this book, and, like, I've come out of it, like, so confused, but, like, in a good way. Like, it's just, you gotta read it for yourself. It's so interesting, and I get almost none of it, but I appreciate the journey. This is... This is the definition of it's about the journey and not the destination <laughs> because at least I'm gonna say that because it makes me feel better about not getting any of it. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo um, Ishiguro. And again, if you wanna sob, <laughs> I've never actually, I know there's a really popular movie that came out. Um, it was Akira Knightley and I forgot the other people, but I've not watched the movie because the book killed me so I don't know if I could handle the movie it would just be so sad um but yeah so that's where the books end over here and then the last two cubbies I'll just turn you this way these are all of Rex's things we've got his food we've got his sticks we've got his greenies we've got his cookies and then down here these are like all of his like feeding bowls we've got plenty of um sticky rollers because there's hair you can see the hair everywhere because <laughs> that's just Rex's hair um, we've got like pee pads and um, bags for his dog poop and then the rest of the drawers on the bottom are just a lot of our clothes because we don't really have a dresser all we have is this and a closet so anything that we don't hang in the closet goes into one of these drawers yeah you're just sitting there chewing in my direction so that's the front of the bookshelf. So here is the back of the bookshelf. We've got a couple more decorations, but mainly this is just kind of like some storage that I'm glad we can kind of sort of hide behind the books. Um, so, ouch, that hurt. So for decoration, we have a glass skull. I think that used to be a vodka <laughs> container. Um, and then we've got a little skeleton dog. We've got a knife that used to belong to my grandfather. Um, and then we've got some more books, so. Down here, we've got our poetry section along with the conch. So I love Lang Leave. Um, I've got a few of her uh, collection of poetry. I've got Edgar Allan Poe, of course, and then I got a book that I inherited from my mother. These are um, novels, some young adult, some just regular fiction. We've got Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. You got some Neil Gaiman, uh, Gillian Flynn. Uh, this one is called French Trysts. We've got Walk Two Moons. I love the Ugly series. I've got the whole thing. I want to get like a nice collector's box out of it. But this is the version I've had since like literally middle school. And even though it's falling apart, it's very sentimental. <laughs> If you can't tell by now, I get sentimental from books. And then last over here, we kind of have a hodgepodge of some nonfiction titles. Um, I've got some books on religion. I've got The God Delusion, The Happy Atheist, Why Buddhism is True, uh, The Purity Myth. Um, and then we've got some random <laughs> kind of true crime-ish bodies we've buried. 
Um, we've got another mother tongue. That was a gift from my cousin when I came out as bi a few years ago. Um, we've got the uh, a random book called The Soprano State about corruption here in New Jersey. I just thought that was interesting. So I picked it up. Um, we got The Theater of War. We've got Buzz. We've got Design the Life You Love. We've got the gigantic Ron Chernow Alexander Hamilton biography. And then we've got a New Moon. It's a writing book I got when I was like in middle school. Down here are just some new comic books and big coffee table books that Alvin got. That's his currently reading list. Here is where I store kind of our candle materials. So there I keep like extra wicks and our um, hot pads. These are like my little candle collection. I've currently got a candle going. Oh, I don't know what candle it is. I'll have to look it up later. I've got some uh, matches and our electric candle lighter. And then down here are just some extra books of Alvin and then an old photo album I'm trying to restore. So if you kind of pan to the left from the big bookshelf, you'll see this tiny little two by two bookshelf. And we've turned this into our new like manga bookshelf section. So as you can see, we've only really got the two top shelves filled in right now. Manga is something that, well, A, can get pretty expensive pretty quickly to actually buy it physically, um, but B, it just it takes up a lot of space when you buy like a whole series. And it's something I've really wanted to get into now that we've actually been able to make space for it. Um, so this is kind of what we're starting with. Um, I had the entire Death Note collection because I love Death Note. I've got a few other pieces over there. Um, all the way over here are the Black Butler books that I bought when I was actually in Japan. So they're all in Japanese. We've got those. And then moving over here, we've got The Way of the House Husband. I've got um, in Japanese the first volume of Sekaiichi Hatsukoi. And then I also bought the same, oh no, the second volume in English. So I got the first in Japanese, second in English. Um, on the top back here, we have the Waltakoi series, which I loved. It was just adorable, something about it. Um, and then on the top right, I've got Cheese Sweet Home, which is another just adorable cat. <laughs> just, just cheese and adorable cat. And sometimes you just need cute cat comics in your life, right? So you got The Way of the House Husband, and then what I'm currently reading and buying is The Wallflower, which was a series I loved as a teenager, but I could never read the whole series because it wasn't available totally online, I don't think. And just buying it all was expensive, but I'm running into the other problem now is that most of it's out of print, so I have to like buy it used. So it's becoming a thing. So I've got three volumes here. I've got some more on my bedside table, which I'm actually going to show you my bedside table next. But as we, as I read and as I add more, it's going to fill up pretty quickly. And actually to help with that, since these um, shelves are so um, deep, uh, Alvin made, can you, okay, let's do it like this. Alvin made these manga risers. So you can buy them custom made. But since this isn't like a forever home and we don't have permanent bookshelves yet, we thought cardboard would work just as well. So he basically measured and made a little cardboard step so that you can have multiple kind of levels of books here and you see it a lot with manga since manga for the most part is kind of standard size except for when it isn't like these <laughs> but for the most part you can have them stacked so that's what we really wanted to do because we're going to start buying more and collecting more that now that we have this space so we've got a bookshelf riser here one on this side and then as we expand to the bottom two shelves we'll have to um, make two more to fit down there so that's it for the little manga section just for now Okay, and just to finish this up, I thought I would just show you my giant to be read list, which is on my bedside table. <laughs> so at the very bottom, I have a financial literacy textbook that I'd like to read. I have Amor Towels. That's the same person who wrote A Gentleman in Moscow. His novel, The Lincoln Highway, I've not read yet. Um, I've got Atomic Habits. I've got Vita Nostra, um, Free Food for Millionaires, Dead Silence, crossings and then a couple volumes of the wallflower so this is the next one that i'm reading down here this is volume four is what i'm on right now i've got volume five and then here we have six seven eight so once i get to volume eight i have to go and dig again and try to find the next few volumes to buy because i had to buy all of these online used and then last but not least this book has been on my list for a while to read and i just haven't ever gotten around to it it's called Reluctant Capitalists, Book Selling and the Culture of Consumption, which I've just been fascinated by ever since I worked back at the bookstore. So I'll eventually, I want to get through these two volumes first, and then I want to get into that. Cause I like to alternate between like fiction, nonfiction, manga, other novels. So that's where we're at currently. <sighs> so that is it. That is the updated bookshelf tour. 
um, I talked more in this video than I have all weekend. <laughs> My throat is very dry and I need a, a break and a drink. <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you, if you literally, like literally, if you have any questions on books or anything that I mentioned, leave it in the comments. I will get to it. I love books. I work in publishing. It's kind of my thing. So let me know if you want to see anything else or if you have any questions. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys.